Hey there, welcome to another episode of Moondane Designs. I'm your host Moondane. This video is part of my underrated game series, and today we're going to be talking about the Game Boy Color, the Game Boy, the GameCube, and the Nintendo. So I actually have a lot of oddball games in my collection, and some of them are a little bit stranger than others. A lot of these are ones that got passed over um, just because they just didn't have the popularity that other games got to benefit from. And uh, largely, I think these are, you know, in general, overlooked games. And um, so with that, we're going to move on to the first game is Power Quest on the Game Boy Color 1998 by Sunsoft. This game is a, a, a little 2D fighter on the Game Boy, and it doesn't suffer from being a port from the Super Nintendo or being a port from another system that had uh, more buttons than the Game Boy Color. The Game Boy Color has four directional D-pad and the B and the A button and select and start if you really want to get into that. but. Most games try very hard not to use those buttons as additional action buttons in the game. So, Power Quest is really good. Uh, it's, you know, you can jump, you can combo, you can throw, you have super moves that you can do, you have hyper moves that you can do to take up power bar, and uh, I remember right, you can build up a three power bar, do three power moves, uh, three hyper moves out, and it's it's a lot more fun than, than uh, people think. I, while I was playing it and even looking at the video again of my gameplay, I had to remind myself that this was on the Game Boy Color and not on another system, not on something like the NES, or not on something like possibly a low-end Game Boy Advance game, but this was an actual Game Boy Color game, and that that speaks volumes. This game is a lot of fun. It has great music. Uh, the moves are wonderful. The, it has a combo system. You know what? What two D fighter on the Game Boy Color? that it was originally built for, which I think this is possibly the only one. I mean, who would think that it has a combo system? It's great. And I would suggest all day, every day, that someone pick this up. And here's the kicker, is it's not just a fighting game, not just player versus player. There's actually an RPG campaign in with it, where you're running around and gathering parts and upgrading your fighter. And this is just a wonderful game. Okay, now we're going to move on to another one of my favorite Game Boy Color games. That's Top Gear Pocket 2 by, uh, by Vital Entertainment. Or you couldn't read my notes there. Uh, night, released 1999. Uh, this was one of, one of my daily drivers for, uh, excuse the pun, for going to college for. Uh, I would grab my Game Boy Color and I would make sure that I had my Pokemon game with me, and then I would make sure that I had uh, Top Gear Pocket 2 as well, because for all of its faults and everything, which I, I don't really see that many faults for what it is, uh, it had great color, it had multiple cars that you could select from, it had fun tracks to drive through, and yeah, it's a little bit cartoony, but it's the Game Boy Color, so it's, it's a game that's meant, meant for kids. but. This thing was a daily driver for me when I was going to college, and it was a great non-committal game that I could essentially pick up, play a couple of rounds, and just get a couple of laps in between classes, and not have to worry about saving or you know, do I get to a particular point in a game, in an adventure, and I don't want to stop playing just because you know I haven't gotten that far. But it was is very episodic, very, you know, take it or leave it all the time. 
Next up, we have something on the original Game Boy. Alleyway. Released in 1989 originally by Nintendo. Alleyway is... It's just an all-time favorite for me. Um, a lot of people gravitate towards Tetris and, and that, and, and I get it, and uh, I do enjoy Tetris, but for some reason Alleyway was just better for me, personally. I I, I loved playing it. Um, I never really got into the, like, into it so big that I needed dial controls or anything like that. Uh, like, there are on the uh, DS, you can get the dial control for an alleyway game, but, or uh, on the NES you can get one for Arkanoid, but I, uh, this was my puzzle game. This was, you know, bouncing around the ball, getting it to bounce just right, getting it up in that upper section so that it would hit like nine or ten times before it came back down for you to bounce it back up again, and it was, it's a lot of fun, um, you know, and I don't see why people uh, don't pay more attention to this game. It's a classic, and I think it's timeless. So next up, we're going to have something from the GameCube. It's uh, Extreme G3, released 2001 by Acclaim. Now, this was my definitive racing series for the GameCube. I, I know, I know there are people out there that really, really enjoy F-Zero X, and, and I'm one of them. I, I love my F-Zero X. But the blistering speed that Extreme G gave you was second to none, especially when you were, had that soundtrack and when you, when you got so fast that you broke the sound barrier and you knew you, you broke the sound barrier when the music faded away. All you could hear is wet. It was great. And, yeah, it is a combat racer, so you're you're shooting weapons, you're you're deploying, you know, you have shields, you're doing boosts, you know, there's there's like a lot of risk and reward in this game. But it's a lot of fun and you know, it deserves a little bit more attention than it has gotten. The last game on the GameCube that I'm gonna mention is Zoids in 2004 by Tommy. Uh or Tony. But Zoids is kind of underrated in America um, all around. There, there was a cartoon for a little while. It saw some short-lived success, and I think that's why this game came out over here. But there's a lot of technical parts to this game where you can't just pick up whichever Zoid you want to run with just because you saw it in the television series and you think that's the coolest one, so that's the one you want to run with. There's there's strategy to this. There's a method to uh, knowing how the attacks go with these Zoids and, and how to use their patterns correctly and what weapons you can use, what the limitations of those weapons are. And that brings a lot to the table for this game. And I think that it's been largely ignored um, you know, yes, you could call it something like uh, the poor man's version of Armored Core, and you wouldn't be too off base there. But to say that the game should be completely ignored, no, I don't. I don't think that. I don't. I can't believe that at all. So finally, the last game we're going to mention today is City Connection on the Nintendo Entertainment System, released by Jalco. Jalico released 1988. I love this game. The music is campy. The the uh, the concept is simple. The enemies are great. Uh, running into the cat, you you normally just laugh at yourself for making the mistake instead of cussing at the screen. Uh, getting rid of the cop cars, essentially painting the town. It's it's great. It's a lot of fun. It's it's just one of those games that you can't help but smile while you're playing it. And, you know, I, d I don't understand why people don't mention this one either. It's a lot of fun. I've got a lot of fond memories with this. I re even remember that there was a, uh, a gas station that 
had this arcade machine in there and I would go in there and play it while my dad was filling up the gas in his car or doing something else or like changing the oil because you know, that, that was one of the things those gas, that gas station would do is you could use their, their service center and dispose of your old, old oil and stuff and change your oil at that gas station. But during, during all of that time, I was playing on this arcade machine and then Nintendo brought it home and I loved it. And you know, it might not be a one-to-one -one arcade port, but it's a really good version of the game and it's worth a second look. Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month, and look forward to sharing with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.